Well, we asked for an interview with the Daily Mail, but surprisingly, no one was available. I am joined now in the studio, though, by the journalist and broadcaster Anne McElvoy, and from Strasbourg by Labour's former Deputy Prime Minister, Lord Prescott. Anne McElvoy, an evil legacy. Where on earth is the evidence for that? Well, I think the, the, uh, you can argue about the choice of words and headline words, but there is no doubt, really, that Ralph Miliband was a very convinced communist, which is not a view that many people in this country share, whether they vote Labour, Conservative, Liberal, Democrat, however left or right-wing they consider themselves. So I think it is actually quite reasonable to look into what Ralph Miliband believed. And in a number of his works, I'm not citing things he wrote when he was 17, because heaven knows I wouldn't like things I'd written when I was 17 put into the public domain. But, you know, he really did believe that the Labour Party had sold its soul to parliamentary democracy, that that weakened its connection to the, the working class and to what he called the struggle. He used consistently Marxist language because he was a Marxist. And he also wrote at one point about the decrepitude of social democracy. Now, these are the things on which our democratic system, our give and take principles are based. And while he may not have hated Britain, he certainly disapproved of many of the founding institutions of the state and was at odds with them. So, John Prescott, a legitimate target then in that case? Well, I think it's deplorable what the Mail did. You know, you've already pointed out the fascist background of uh, the owners of the Mail and the attitude they took to the Labour Party. I knew Ralph Miliband. He didn't like Parliament. He didn't like social democracy in that sense and argued very much against it. But he's entitled to that. But the issue is not what his views were or that he was fighting for the government while the Mail was praising black shirts. Basically, what he is a history is not Ed Miliband's. You can't character assassination of Ed Miliband simply because what the father did. That, in fact, it would be like saying to Mr. Dacre, who's in charge of all this, look. We'll blame you for what Viscount Rothermere and those did uh, in supporting the Germans but by, and the fascists. Uh, but the you fact can't that Ed, put that on okay. But the fact that Ed Miliband's rushed to his defence and you know made really quite a hoo-ha about it does play into the sort of red Ed narrative that the Daily Mail loves to beat beat him over the head with. Hang on. Hang on, would you get angry if somebody attacked your father for what they believed and perhaps entirely different to what the son believed? Would you attack them? I probably would, on, but it might not be would. wise. Anybody with, any, anybody with blood in their ruddy hearts would say, yes, I'm going to defend my family. I argued with my father. I had exactly the same with my father. I didn't take his views, and neither did Ed. He um, does believe in Parliament. I'm a cowboy. Well, you know, I have some sympathy for, for that view emotionally, but the fact remains that Ed Miliband has often used his father and talked about his father in speeches and in his self-presentation as an inspiration. When he was asked last week about the word socialism, he said we're doing it. He aligned himself with a language on socialism that a lot of New Labour put aside, and also for good historic reasons, because there was a split in the tradition on the left between those who went the Ralph Miliband route of revolutionary socialism and continued to believe in it, but one way or the other they were trying to get it, and those who went the Labour Party route. And a lot of those people, John Prescott and others, had to fight when it came to the Benite rebellion in the party. So it seems to me that actually, you know, Ed Miliband but does have to say which bits of his dad's belief he agrees with and which he doesn't. But hang on. And, and you know as well as I do, the debate about social, socialism has gone on for decades and decades. It goes on between the left and the right, the old Labour, new Labour. These are arguments that take place. What you've got to judge Miliband on is his judgment of what policies he's bringing in. He's been at a very successful conference. He's said things that the party like. Yes, it is interventionist and it needs to be because he's on the but side Don don't, of the I do think there is a particular Those case to answer. There is a case to answer when you're dealing with someone who didn't accept the basic precepts of democracy. He okay. also thought that the bourgeois that liberal was his values father. didn't help. Well, it may have been his father, but okay. we, you know, we haven't really let, heard let what me, Ed Miliband thinks about Let me just that. ask, John Prescott, you're not going to get an apology. You've what... picked a battle that you can't win here, haven't you? Who with? Mr Dacre? Yes, exactly. Mr Dacre won't come on and debate this issue. You've tried to get somebody from the Daily Mail. They've tried all day. They've turned down to come and debate with me. Why doesn't he show his face? He's but you a bully. Accept you're He's not a coward. Give an apology. And he you're... writes all these things. You're not going to win this battle. Pardon? You're not going to win this battle, are you? We're not going to... What is the battle? To defend pa parents, to say that truth and decency should be put up front, that he be judged against that criteria, not the history of his father. Surely to God, that is at least the most decent way of dealing it. This is act of bullying, which has always been associated with the male. Mr Dacre, come on and defend your position. He's given four he's more statements He's too busy putting his paper then. to bed, John. Don't turn up. <laughs> there, there is one, there is, there is, he's putting his paper to bed, I should imagine, like all editors. But, you know, one of the big problems for Ed is he was defined 
by the, the feud with his brother over the leadership. And he is in danger. And I would, you know, say to this, if you had his interests at heart, I'd say don't get off on another argument where you're defined by defending the interests of your late father. He really has to defend himself. The rest of his family is not what our focus should be on. Is there any risk that, you well, know, advertisers will... It, 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 just let, just let me ask, is there any risk that advertisers will uh, end up boycotting the mail over this? It's a remote... Yeah. It's a remote it? chance. I mean, there is a bit more advertiser activism around in newspapers, both here and in America, than there was. I would find it personally so piquant were advertisers to come into the fray to defend the legacy of someone who was a, a foe of, of big business in the free markets. That seems less than likely to me. I think it will rumble on as a very ill-tempered argument. But it may be that in drawing such attention to it, probably Ed Miliband has, has shone a, a, a more of a light on, on the mail than he intended to do so that could possibly be good for him. Emma Calvoy. John Prescott, thank you very much for joining me.